here are four of my family's favorite Thanksgiving desserts. Sweet potato pie, caramel pecan pumpkin bread pudding, German chocolate pie, and Louisiana pecan pie. Give these a try. You'll love them. I'm making a sweet potato pie. This is going to be an 11-inch deep dish pie. So let's get started on Darlene's table. I baked my sweet potatoes about a week ago, and I actually did quite a few, and I put them in four cup portions in a freezer bag to be used later. They're so much better than the canned ones. Please try it, it's so easy. You can bake them in the oven, or you can boil them whole with the skin on, and you know, in water. Boil them, let them cool, and it, the skin just peels right off with your hands. It's so easy. So to make this pie today, I'm gonna to start by putting a quarter cup of light brown sugar. So I'm gonna spread this around. Now I completely baked this crust. I told you before, that's what I always do with my pies. And then I cover this with a silicone ring and it does not brown anymore. And the bottom does not get soggy ever. I know most bakers don't do this on a pie that's going into the oven, but I do. Now, I'm going to just mash this down a little bit. I'm just using a one-third measuring cup to do this. I'll mash it down. I'm going to use um, my husband's torch, his shop torch, to caramelize this. They make smaller ones that you can buy at kitchen stores and probably online, but this is what I have, why not use it? So you're gonna go all around on this brown sugar until it's caramelized. Now at this point, we're gonna set this aside and let it cool. Next, I will work on the pie filling. First, the brown sugar and the white sugar together. My spices, melted butter, three eggs, a little vanilla, heavy cream, the second half of the sweet potatoes. I'm using my Vitamix blender. Of course, you can use what you have, food processor, regular blender, hand mixer, but the Vitamix really makes a smooth filling. All right, now the caramelized sugar is all cooled and it's hard. As another way to protect the crust, plus it gives another dimension of flavor to this pie. See how smooth this is? Oh my goodness, it's so smooth. Spread it around evenly. All right, this silicone ring, these things are worth every penny. You can buy them on Amazon, call it a silicone pie ring. This crust will not brown anymore. Into the oven at 350 degrees for an hour and a half. This is a deep dish 11 inch pie. There we go, you see? That's an hour and a half. That's how long it takes to make this wonderful pie. And we'll let it cool completely. You can see the crust looks great. It was protected. You can see that the pie is risen during baking, but as it cools, it will go flat and you will have a nice, flat, smooth surface. And then after it's cool, we'll put it in the refrigerator to really get cold. And there it is, a yummy, old-fashioned sweet potato pie. Some people prefer it over pumpkin. Me, I like them both. This is a wonderful pie, and I hope you give it a try very soon. Please let me know what you think in the comments. And if you like this video, do us a favor and click the like button and hit the bell so you'll be notified when we post another video. We hope to see you again soon on Darlene's Table. Have a blessed day. I'm making the Louisiana pecan pie today. It will soon be one of your favorite pies. And the star of this show is pecan praline whiskey. Yes, that's whiskey, not liqueur. So let's get started. I'm adding three quarter cup of light brown sugar three tablespoons of flour with a pinch of salt. We're gonna mix this real well. Need to get all the lumps out of the brown sugar, which sometimes there are some. And if need be, you need to mix this with your hands. 
to get all those little lumps out. Now we're going to add one and three quarter cup of Cairo, light Cairo corn syrup. I'm going to mix this well and it will go to the heat next. About a medium heat on your stove, continuously stir it. Do not let this come to a boil. In just a moment I will show you where I stop. It's, it's, we're almost there. Keep stirring. Uh, you see the bubbles? Just a few bubbles on the edge. That's where I'm going to stop. Turn the heat off. Turn the heat off and set this aside for a moment. Now we're going to put one and a half to two cups of good quality pecans. I buy mine from Birdall Pecan Farm in Cedar Park, Texas. You can see that I put this in a pre-baked pie shell. Don't worry about it. We're going to cover up that crust. It's not going to overbake. All right, we're going to mix five eggs very well. Once we get these mixed well, we're going to set this aside. This is the hot mixture. I'm going to add six tablespoons of melted butter and two tablespoons of the pecan praline whiskey. Mix this well. Now I'm going to drizzle that mixture, that warm mixture, slowly into the eggs. Very slowly. You don't want scrambled eggs. That looks good. Now I'm going to add one tablespoon of vanilla bean paste. I just really like the taste of vanilla bean better than just pure vanilla. All right, now we're going to pour this slowly over the pecans into the pie shell. Very slowly. Now I'm going to use a spoon just to go over the top to get all the pecans to the top. Next, I'm going to cover that crust with a silicone pie ring that's adjustable. You can use it for different size pies. That will keep the crust from browning more than it is because it's already cooked through. Into the oven at 350 degrees for 50 to 55 minutes. Well, that looks good. Yes, this is ready. Now I'm going to let this cool and then actually put it in the refrigerator for a couple of hours before I cut it. Oh, I broke the pie crust a little bit. But you can see the pie is set really well. Beautiful golden color. And there you have it. A beautiful Louisiana pecan pie that will be absolutely delicious. Hello, my name is Darlene and welcome to my cooking channel where I post recipes that I've tried, tested, and verified, saving you time, money, and a lot of frustration. And you can find all my printable recipes on my webpage, darlenestable.com. Today, I'm making caramel pecan pumpkin bread pudding. So let's get started on Darlene's Table. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the brown sugar, add the cinnamon, and nutmeg and salt. Now I always like to mix my sugar, and if I have flour I add it at this point. Mix it up real well before I add the other wet ingredients. Alright, so I'm even going to use my hands a little bit to make sure there's no lumps. You know, the hard lumps that won't dissolve. Okay, that looks really good. So next I'm going to add the five eggs. And I'm going to mix this. Now 
in with the pumpkin. This is two, two cans of pumpkin puree, pure pumpkin, not pie filling. All right, so I'm gonna mix this. Now we're gonna come in with milk, a cup and a half of whole milk, one cup of half and half, and vanilla bean paste. Okay, now, here. now I'm going to mix this all together. And I'm going to add my 12 ounces. Remember, I did these two weeks ago. Look, two weeks ago, and they've been in the bag. So. Now would be a good time to ring that bell so you get notified when I post a new video. Also, if you like the content, like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. I want to make sure the bread cubes are coated well, and then they will continue to absorb the liquids. This is going to be so good. Now, so we all have screw-ups, and I forgot to put the butter in, so I didn't even get it to the refrigerator. I'm adding the butter now, and I'm going to give it a good stir. Now, this is going to go into the refrigerator for two to three hours. Tighten the foil around the edges, but leave it a little bit loose on top. So it'll go in the oven at 350 for 50 minutes. Then the foil will be removed and it will cook for another 20 minutes. All right, so I have a cup of light brown sugar, a stick of butter. And I'm gonna use one tablespoon of Cairo. A little bit more is not going to hurt. So I'm adding vanilla. And now the pecan. My goodness, this is thick. That's way too thick. I want to be able to pour this over my bread pudding. So I'm adding some heavy cream. I'd say that's about a third of a cup. Oh, that's gonna make this so good. Now, yes, that's the way I want it. I'm gonna pour this caramel so that I can pour it over the cake. I followed the recipe exactly, but that was too thick. You're not going to drizzle that over the bread pudding. So, I added a quarter cup of cream, and it looks like my caramel sauce is now perfect. Okay, it's ready, out of the oven. Now it's time to pour the caramel pecan sauce over the top. Back into the oven for five minutes, that's all. Five minutes will be enough to heat the sauce back up. Now, I let this cool for about 20 to 30 minutes before I sliced it. Oh my goodness. Oh, that looks so yummy. Look at those wonderful cubes of bread pudding. Soft. It's so moist. 
and fluffy. Mmm. The pumpkin flavor is so infused in this because you use two whole cans of pumpkin puree and it shows. It's so good. I also added vanilla to this. I added more cinnamon, more nutmeg, another egg to the bread pudding batter. And then to the caramel pecan topping, it was too thick. As soon as I cooked the sugar and the Cairo um, I, and the butter, I added cream to it and that made it where you could pour it because that's what we wanted to pour it back over the, the bread pudding and it worked out just fine and I have made all these adjustments to the original recipe but look at this you can just see look see how nice that bread pudding is and this is with the challah bread isn't that good? It was so good. Everyone enjoyed it. And this is going to be a keeper for Thanksgiving for sure. Maybe all through the year because it's so good. Caramel Pecan Pumpkin Bread Pudding. This is a prime example of why you should follow my channel and website. This recipe as written was really good, but it had some issues that with the help of experience, I was able to make it better. The changes I made are documented and we updated the recipe, which you will find on the website, darlenestable.com. Folks, I've got to say, I think this is the best bread pudding I've ever made, and I've made a lot of bread pudding over the years. With tons of pumpkin flavor and fall spices like nutmeg and cinnamon, this bread pudding hits all the flavor notes, and the texture was simply amazing. I hope you will give us a try soon, and that's it for this video. This is Halloween weekend, so happy Halloween from Darlene's Table. Oh my God, Darlene, that's a good piece of pie. Great, let me show you how to make it. Today I'm making a German chocolate pie with a topping much like you put on a German chocolate cake. So let's get started. This is an 11 inch pie crust that I made several weeks ago. When I make pie crust, I'll make six to nine at a time and stack them with a sheet of wax paper between each one and put them in the freezer. We're going to pre-bake this pie shell from frozen. This prevents the pie shell from shrinking. Place it in a 425F preheated oven for 20 minutes. I'm removing the silicone pie weights and I'm going to put it back in the oven for about eight to nine minutes to complete baking. Back in we go. See you in eight minutes. Now the pie shell is done and we'll start making a chocolate filling for the pie. Here are the ingredients for the next step, which is cooking the chocolate filling. You'll find the ingredients listed in the description of this video. In a medium saucepan, put two-thirds cup of sugar, about an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, six tablespoons of cornstarch, and then mix this very well. Now I'm adding three cups of half and half that I've blended four egg yolks in, and we will cook this on a medium heat continuously stirring. Okay, this is looking good. It's thickened up and we're going to turn off the heat. Now I'm going to add three tablespoons of butter. I added three tablespoons of water to a half a tablespoon of gelatin. They call this blooming the gelatin. Then two packages of German sweet chocolate. That's a full eight ounces. Each package is only four ounces. 
The recipe says to melt the chocolate and butter in the microwave until smooth, but you can do this in the pot. It's what I've always done. Stir the chocolate until it melts and is blended very well along with the butter and the gelatin. Now add vanilla, about a teaspoon, maybe a little more. It doesn't have to be exact. Now you can see the filling is done and we poured it in the pie shell, smoothing it out. And I'm gonna put a piece of saran over the surface and press it down. This will prevent the skin from forming while chilling in the refrigerator and the saran will pull right off. Here are the ingredients for the German chocolate topping. Again, I've included this list in the description of this video. I'm going to make the topping for the German chocolate pie. Half a cup of sugar, two thirds cup of evaporated milk, one egg plus one egg yolk. I'm going to take my whisk and whisk this very well. Over a medium heat, we'll add a quarter cup of cubed butter, small cubes. I'll heat this until the butter is melted. The butter is melted. I'm going to bring it to a boil and then cut the heat down to a slow simmer and cook for about two minutes more until the topping is thick. See the bubbles? It's starting to boil. We're going to let it go for the two minutes until thick. The topping is thickened. It's time to put in the pecans. This will put, cool it off a little bit, and then we're going to add the toasted coconut and give it a good stir. This is the same topping you put on a German chocolate cake. We're going to set this aside now and let it cool until our pie has cooled completely. Our pie has cooled. Now we're going to spread this German chocolate topping generously on top of the chocolate pie. Put it back in the fridge and let it chill before serving. There you have it, a German chocolate pie. We hope you'll give it a try soon. If you like chocolate pie and German chocolate cake, you're going to love this. My husband sure did, and the first piece always goes to the cameraman.